Bridgestone in 2011. And uh, there's been a lot of new things going on with the band since last time I saw you. Yes. Uh, first things first, there's a new drummer. Looks there he like. is. He's got a good name. His yeah. name is Wes. Uh -huh. so, uh, so there's two Wes's in the band now. Um, Kelsey is uh, back in school, getting married in October. Cool. So he's got other things going on. And uh, it's just something you need to do. You need to change his life and stuff. And so we kind of. part of this. <laughs> End of story, there's really nothing more to it. I mean, it's it it really, really easy transition. Uh, he just needed to do it, and we were like, go for it, do it. It's great. You know, change is awesome sometimes. I'm not worried about it at all, and then. Wes just kind of jumped right in. Uh, you got the new record coming out? September 6th. September 6th? Yeah. I'm really excited about it. And Kelsey did record the album. We co-produced it with Matt Hoops um, from Reliant Camp. And he's just been a good friend of ours for a long time. And, and he's never he's never produced albums before. And he just kind of like understood where our vision was for uh, the new songs and was like, listen, I, I can get you guys into the studio and I think I can make this work really, really well. And so we kind of agreed. And there wasn't really anybody else that kind of understood what we wanted to do. And what we wanted to do is just get, we wanted to capture more of our live sound. And, and we've tried to do that before, we tried to do that with Birds in Cages and we got closer, but it wasn't there yet. And I feel like this album is closer, definitely closer than we've ever been. Um, we were really uh, careful, it's, it's so easy for us when we get into the studio to start putting in more than we need to into the songs, start putting in more guitar tracks, strings or you know, auxiliary percussion or, you know, three piano parts, you know, you just have that freedom in the studio and and I think Birds and Cages taught us how to not do that as much. And so with this one, um, we didn't. And so what you hear on the album is what we're playing and there's not really a whole lot more to it. There's not a whole lot of polish to it. It's just kind of there and it is what it is. So that was our approach to recording. I think we did a, a really good job of capturing that energy. And, uh, and we learned a lot because we got to be a lot more involved in the production end of things. Uh, I noticed you're playing some acoustic guitar. I am. Track. Yeah. Uh, you used to play, uh, you used to have a, you know, a second keyboard. Yeah. Uh, is there anything yep. specific? Just, I just love to change it up. and. We just needed to, you know, we used to use tracks as well. And with Wes coming in, it was just a good time to just drop the tracks. And he plays with a click, but it's loose. You know, he's, it's kind of secondary. He follows us and we follow him. It's, it's a lot more free now than it's ever been. And, and, you know, there's like the acoustic track on the new album. And there's, we've been writing new versions of stuff. When we started the band, we started it playing songs that that were solo songs like that I had written. So we started doing that and then we started writing together but I kept playing the acoustic. So for you know a couple of years, the beginning of the band, I was playing a guitar and then we dropped it and I was playing piano for the bulk of our career and now it's just kind of be like, well, let's pick it up again. It's just fun, like, let's just do it. And it's, it helps me to grow as a musician too. I'm so nervous. <laughs> playing that acoustic track tonight. I was just so scared, <laughs> but I don't know. It's I think it's good for me, and and hopefully it just it adds to the thick you know, the sound that we're going for. Uh, I was also pleasantly surprised to see Dan Smith. Yeah, uh, that was awesome. The album? No, no, we asked him to do it today. Yeah. He had never even heard this song before. <laughs> we sat in the van and and he did it for he did this part like for us in the van. Yeah. <laughs> It, yeah, uh, we were just like, okay. He did, He did. well, we talked about the lyric and what the song was about. It was a song called Quiet Like Sirens, and it's about, like, this sneaky, like, brooding monster, uh, like, slowly overtaking 
something or someone. And the monster being like addictions or anything that's you know, that it's captivating in a negative way and it's kind of holding someone down or something like that. So it, it's just calling that out kind of a little bit and and so the lyrics are kind of haunting a little bit and, and so we talked about that and he had a piece from you know some of his music that fit and so he just tried it well he had something prepared and he'd never even heard the song before jumped in the van and it fit like me measure to measure like perfect fit it was really strange so we ran with it and he came out and did it We had 27 songs going in, so we had too many, like way too many, too many ideas. Uh, and so in pre-production, we just had to whittle away at a lot of, a lot of stuff. Um, and that changes the lyric a lot, and it changes when you do that because, I mean, you have 27 ideas. A lot of times you love one part of a song, you know, so you got to try to make that useful in another song if you can. And so that, that sort of changes. Um, so our, the lyrics generally come last. And I really, for this album, I tried really hard to, to stick with the songs lyrically that wrote themselves. Uh, and that kind of showed me what they were about as they were being written. Because those tend to be different, not always better, just different. And, I was, and they kind of fit what we were doing musically better, for some reason in my mind. I don't know if that makes sense <laughs> to, on the outside or if it works for other people. I have no idea. But the songs that kind of just fell in my lap or we were there and caught them, you know what I mean? Sometimes you feel like you're trying to write songs and you can't and then you're trying to write songs and they write themselves. Or you sweat them out and either sweating them out and songs that write themselves, they can be equally good, you know, sometimes working on a song for months really does make a better song. But on this project, long explanation here. On this project, I really wanted it just to be the songs that had their own thing and that I was discovering it as well. It was kind of fun that way. So This album, is, I'm so excited about it. I feel like it's really special. Um, it's special to me. There's a few tracks on it that are really, really special to me, the way they, they turned out and just the involvement that we got to have in the project above and beyond what most people get to do, you know, when they're working with record labels and, and managers and producers and stuff like that, that all kind of, you know, have their, fi their fingerprints on it. This is, this is a really personal project for us and a step in a direction we're really proud of. Yeah. On Birds and Cages, the last track, Atlantis, hmm. um, I always, sometimes I felt like that song was almost a metaphor for the band hmm. about, uh, like you have this message that you're trying to get out to the surface. Mm -hmm. um, is that that's a metaphor for anybody that has something to share. Mm -hmm. I I did something there. I I started something there that I continue with uh, the new album in September. But with that song, I started writing with a more fictional, like storytelling. You know, it's pretty vague, actually. It's not a very good storytelling song, but it is like a fiction kind of thing. It's not like about something that happened to me. You know, it's it's literally about the city of Atlantis being like in this globe under the water that nobody knows about, but there are people there, and they know about us, and they're trying to get us get our attention because they have something special to share with us. And that is a metaphor for a lot of things in life. People have so much that they don't realize they can share with people, you know? Like, they just need the opportunity or they need the support, or, you know, whatever it might be for them to get that out, you know? I think that God puts things in us that we have no idea how important it is in, in every person, you know? And sometimes it's just really hard to discover that or maybe you don't. Maybe it just happens and you don't even know it. But that's kind of where Atlantis comes from. <laughs>
Nashville has never been what I expected, ever. Um, we started the band and it was just, like I said, me doing solo stuff and, and friends getting together and playing music for fun in college. And we played a few shows and all of a sudden we were doing a recording and the response was good. So we kept doing it and we just haven't stopped. And it's, and it's become something that, it's, it's become something we never expected it to and it continues to do that. I, when we started playing Cornerstone, we were playing a generator stage for 10 people maybe that were just people walking by that would stop and listen. And today we got to play for a packed tent at the gallery stage and we were invited here and like we have an agent that booked us here. I mean, just like, what? How did that, how did that happen to a little band from Arkansas? I have no idea. And we're just doing what we love to do and somehow it turned into something that we get to do all the time. So. It's never, uh, I try really hard not to take that for granted because it's special. And I, I know that there are thousands, hundreds if not thousands of, of people out there that, that would love the chance to do it. I, I try not to forget that. And I'm just really honored to be able to, I don't know, experience life this way right now. past few years we've been doing the band full-time um, but we toured a lot for Birds in Cages and Copeland May, Lydia, Warp Tour, just a bunch of stuff and, uh, and so we we kind of have been on a break for like seven or eight months and so we haven't really been generating a lot because we haven't been working so we've been, we've been doing other stuff. I've been teaching piano and guitar at, at a, a music school, which has been really interesting. <laughs> and Laura has been working um, at a restaurant downtown Nashville doing like booking special events. I mean, it's just like, we've been really blessed to be doing that. So Laura and I just moved to Nashville in September. So we're, we relocated there. I and mean, that's been a really good move over and stuff. I don't know, it's been really cool. Are the other guys still in Arkansas? Andy and Chris here in Arkansas. Justin is in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Yeah. Wes is in Gainesville, Florida. Is that we are all over the place right now. Does that make it comp more complicated as far as? Yeah, it's a new challenge. It's, it's just a different challenge, but I mean, it's just what it is. Life changes, man. You have to change with it. If you're going to stay a band, you have to be flexible. If you're not, then it just doesn't work. Keep an eye out for that album, September 6th. We're really excited about it. I mean, self-titled? Self-titled, yeah. Ooh. Just <laughs> day's fail. <laughs> we are doing vinyl as well, oh, which I love vinyl, so I'm so excited about it. I just bought my it. first vinyl this year. I just picked up Mumford & Sons yesterday. They're on vinyl.